Funding for this program was provided by the Annenberg CPB Project. six-part telecourse funded by the Annenberg CPB project to teach college physics at the introductory level. Each half-hour program will consist of lecture hall sequences, historical recreations, laboratory demonstrations, and about five minutes worth of computer animation. The animation will illustrate physical concepts ranging from abstract mathematics to the reconstruction of classic experiments. For example, here we are in Vectorland, showing algebra of vectors. Vectors play an important part in the series, and of course, they obey the right-hand rule. Consider the early questions about inertia. Should an object dropped from a tower fall straight down? Since the Earth is supposedly spinning, shouldn't it go bounding off across the countryside? In fact, if the Earth is spinning, why doesn't everything just fly off? Galileo began to see the answer with a series of thought experiments on balls rolling down inclined planes. Once an object gets moving, it stays moving. Newton is a central figure of the series. Here is his thought experiment explaining how bodies can go into orbit. If they move forward fast enough, the Earth will curve away from them at the same rate that they're falling. Newton theorized that the acceleration of apples by the Earth has the same formula as the acceleration of the moon by the Earth. The same physical laws apply in the heavens that apply in everyday life. Points on circular orbits can be described by either rectangular or polar coordinates. These are related by trigonometry. Remember this, we will use it later. Taking the difference of radius vectors at two different times, dividing by the time, and going to the limit gives the velocity vector, perpendicular to the radius. Similarly, the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity, so it always points inward along the radius vector. By timing the orbit, we can find the relation between the lengths of these vectors. The planets are held in their orbits by gravitational force. The force of gravity is equal to minus a constant times the product of the masses divided by the square of the distance between them. Since mass is always positive, gravity always attracts. The electric force can either attract or repel. The attracting electric force is what holds most matter together. For example, a salt crystal sticks together by the attraction between the positive sodium ions and the negative chloride ions. To investigate nuclear forces, we ride along with an ion as it travels through a particle accelerator. Steering around corners by magnetic fields,
and passing through a quadrupole focusing magnet. Ultimately, the nuclei collide and merge, releasing energy in the form of a gamma ray. Calculus and differential equations are used to describe physical problems. Differential equations can be solved by educated guessing. Here, for simple harmonic motion, we guess the solution to be a sine wave. To see if it matches the original equation, we pass it through the old derivative machine. Yup, the solution matches, and shows how the frequency, omega, depends on the strength of the spring and the mass at the end of the spring. The final programs in the series show how Newton's laws of motion can predict planetary orbits, and, more recently, be used to navigate spacecraft through the solar system, as in Voyager 2's flight past Neptune, scheduled for 1989. Ultimately, Newton's laws can even describe the complexity of the rings of Saturn. This simulation uses data returned by Voyager 2 on over 20,000 individual ringlets. Each ringlet you see is a real feature in the ring system. programs will be distributed to colleges and universities throughout the country. It will also be broadcast by PBS, where it can bring these ideas more into the mind of the public and enable everyone to appreciate how physics works. <laughs>